38 past the hour, now to an NBC News exclusive. Just weeks after becoming co-chair of the Republican National Committee, Donald Trump's daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, sat down for a wide-ranging interview with NBC's Garrett Hake. She talked about the direction of the party as well as the 2024 presidential campaign. With us to talk more about this, NBC News correspondent Garrett Haig, who covers the Trump campaign and sat down with Lara Trump. Also, Michael Steele, former Republican National Committee chair and host of The Weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, right here on MSNBC. And Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. So, Garrett, what did Lara Trump have to tell you? Well, Jose, I found the whole conversation interesting because her just her appointment into this role kind of solidifies the idea that this is now Donald Trump's Republican Party. And in many ways, our interview reinforced that point, the way that she talks about getting you know, <clears throat> Nikki Haley voters back into the party or voters who uh, African-American voters whom they're targeting is all about going after Joe Biden. It is very much in line with the Trump campaign's tactics. On Ukraine, for example, she's very much in line with Donald Trump. But she's also trying to push the Donald Trump of 2020 to embrace the kind of modern election tactics of 2024. And that includes things like voting by mail and voting early, something that Donald Trump has demonized, thus making those tactics unpopular with Republican voters. And so while she herself has questioned the 2020 election, she's now trying to kind of have it both ways here and pull the party into the modern era of elections while not turning her back on the election denialism of her father-in-law. I asked her what the RNC's view would be on this under her leadership, and her answer was instructive. Is it going to be the position of the RNC in 2024 that the 2020 election was not fairly decided or that it was stolen somehow? Well, I think we're past that. I think that's in the past. We learned a lot. Certainly, we took a lot of notes. Right now, we have 23 states uh, that have 78 lawsuits in these states to ensure that it is harder to cheat and easier to vote. And every single person, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, should want that. We want fairness and transparency in our elections. The past is the past. So I think that's what we are probably going to expect to see from the rest of the party, not necessarily from Donald Trump himself going forward, this idea of putting 2020 behind them as best they can, trying to take what they have learned from that and make it not about the idea of a stolen election, but about making sure their voters believe they can and should vote early and vote by mail so they don't lose that advantage to Democrats again in a second election. What Donald Trump is willing to say or do about that issue, Jose, I think is a totally separate question on which, as we've learned time and time again, nobody really speaks for him but him. Yeah, and Michael, I was just thinking it was many years ago, almost in a way many lives ago, that you were chair of the RNC. How do you see this? Oh, it's hysterical. Uh, I, I appreciate my, my man, uh, Mr. Hake, for, for the interview. The reality of it is he spoke to the co-chair of the RNC, not the chairman of the RNC. And that should tell you everything you want to know about what this is and what, what it isn't. The co-chair is typically an unknown factor. They, they don't run anything. Uh, no reporter seeks out the co-chair of the party to ask them questions. But this is different, and it should tell you everything you need to know. And the fact that Laura is sitting there thinking and trying to get us to believe that when Donald Trump tells her, I need this bill paid, that the RNC is not going to pay it, no, no matter what the mechanism they set up, that's, that's just not real. The fact that she says that, well, that's the past, 2020s in the past, that's also not true. Because Donald Trump is out here talking about it, which means every Republican is going to be talking about it. So, the, you know, they're, they're trying to do two things as, at once. They're trying to, you know, paint, paint this all up as something normal. Oh, we're just now just a normal, typical political party that's going to go about the business of defeating our political opponents. This is not this party, and this is not this race. Um, it is all driven by what Donald Trump wants in the moment he wants it. And that's why she's there. And so stop pretending that it's something else other than that. You are in that role because you have no, no reason to otherwise be the co-chair of the Republican National Committee, except for the fact that your father-in-law is the former president and the titular head of the party. Otherwise, you're behind me sitting back at home. That's the truth of it. So let's not pretend it's something else other than what we see here that this is Trump's party. She is there to do what she, what Trump wants her to do. 
that this is not going to be anything other than prosecuting that case, whether it's 2020 or 2024. And Susan, meanwhile, independent presidential candidate uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. announced yesterday that he chose lawyer and entrepreneur Nicole Shanahan as his running mate this year. He also had this to say about accusations. He's playing spoiler in the November election. The principal technique is to call me a spoiler and instill fear in Americans that voting for me will will get some other terrifying candidate elected. Our campaign is a spoiler. I agree with that. It... It's, a, it's a spoiler for President Biden and for President Trump. Well, Susan, Trump reacted in a post on his social media site overnight saying, quote, I love that he's running. So, Susan, who is RFK Jr. the biggest threat to? Yeah, I mean, a rare issue on which uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden agree, which is that RFK Jr. is a bigger threat to Biden than he is to Trump. I mean, he's less directly and clearly and sharply a, a threat the way Cornell West is or Jill Stein. Their support is very much full from, from uh, the Democratic side of things. But overall, given the solidity of Donald Trump's support, and given uh, the, the need for Biden to get every vote he can that's not going to Trump, RFK does pose, pose a, a spoiler role to, to, to President Biden. And, you know, that is one reason that these third-party candidates tend to fade as you get closer to the election, because Americans are generally loath to throw away their vote. When push comes to shove, sho to shove they often come home to their party when the election day gets near, Jose. Yeah, and uh, Michael, how serious of a threat is RFK Jr. to both the Democrats and the Republicans? Uh, he's a he's a threat to both. I mean, I think that there's some private polling that has uh, has RFK Jr. hitting that 12 to 13 percent mark nationally. That's a problem. That's a problem. Th does that number grow uh, between now and November to to reach the Ross Perot level of 17 percent? And we know what that did to the Bush campaign. Um, at that time. Uh, the same truth uh, is in place for Joe Biden in this race. He is a bigger threat to Joe Biden than he is to Donald Trump, uh, which is why Donald Trump loves the fact that he's in the race. He knows what the private polling from his camp is showing. So, yeah, it is, it is a concern for both parties. I think you're going to see, and I've already begun to see, uh, as Garrett can can note, um, some pushback by the by the Biden campaign on on RFK Jr. I think you're going to see more of that. Probably less so from the Republicans and the RNC, for example, because they think this works for them. Uh, that it eats away at the more progressive uh, vote that is already fed up with Joe Biden to some extent and have a place to go, as opposed to um, the point of going back home. Uh, to the Democratic Party if there's a port in the storm that they can stop at before they get there. Garrett Haig, Michael Steele, and Susan Page, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.